Recently, we put this high-powered K24A2 in this 2010 Honda CRZ. A lot of wheel spin. But let me ask you a question. Is the K-Swap already played out? Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. I'm a trendsetter. This is the Honda K24A2. This is the hotness if you're into Honda performance. This is the motor everybody wants. It's the one that responds fantastically to modifications. It's no problem getting 220, 230, 240 horsepower just with bolt-on products on this engine. And super popular. If you're thinking about doing a, an engine swap, this is probably at the top of your list. The K-Series engine is the desirable swap right now, but it wasn't always like that. Before the K was the B and the H. The B-Series engine was the king of swaps for a long, long time. Then, around the early 2000s, the K-Series came along. Interestingly enough, people thought the swap was dead because one of the big problems with the K-Series was Honda swapped the engine. So, with the B-Series, the engine's on this side of the car and the K-Series engine on that side of the car. So, it was a lot more difficult to make mounts to make that happen. So, people were telling me, Ah, the engine swap's dead. We're not going to be doing engine swaps anymore. B-series are going to start getting expensive, but that's not what happened. Uh, we quickly found out how to mount these engines in the older cars, and the K-swap took off. So right around the end of the 2008, 2007 even, the K-swap started getting popular and started displacing the B. And let's face it, there are a lot of cars with K's that are much, much faster than the B's were. You could take just a stock one of these. You could even take the low horsepower K24 that comes in the Accord and pretty much shut down anybody with a stock B18C. So these K's have really proven their worth. In fact, if you go look at all the fastest all-motor drag cars and at least half of all the big giant turbo cars are K-series nowadays. This is the motor that everybody uses to get a lot of power. But there's a limited number of them. These engines are no longer in production. So although they're still in salvage yards each year, there's going to be fewer and fewer. And the price, unfortunately, is going to go up because of that. Also, a lot of these engines are older. And because they're older, they're going to need rebuilds. They're going to need other maintenance just to kind of keep them going. So we started looking into the L15. The L15 is plentiful right now. It's coming in the Honda CRV, the Honda Civic, the Honda Accord, and a lot of models over in other countries as well. So these engines are going to be the future of Honda engine swaps. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to be as popular as the K-Series was, because for a lot of people, K-Series says Honda. They're high revving. They have VTEC, and people really like that. They like it when the VTEC crossover happens. All of a sudden, you can feel the power and you can feel the engine start to accelerate harder. Plus, they rev high, six-speed transmissions. It is truly a Honda feel. This car is, in my mind, what K-swaps are all about. We have this engine in a small lightweight car and it makes it super fun to drive. So is this still gonna be at the top of your list with Honda's new engines? Here is the same model CRZ with an L15 B7. This is the motor that comes in the Civic Si. Turbo, more torque, and tunable for more horsepower. Now, let's talk about What's the state of the art now with engine swaps with the L15 B7? Because I'm telling you right now, they're coming for you. This particular car uses a Hasport mount kit to mount this engine in. It uses a Honda L15 swap ECU in order to make it compatible with this car. And the wiring harness on this is made by 
JDI, uh, Jordan Distributing Incorporated, they make the harness that makes this engine possible to run in these cars. Now, Honda had to do a few things with the ECU in order to allow it to run in a car that the immobilizer didn't match with, but that's what Honda does. They modify ECUs. It still retains its ability to be uh, computer tuned, and uh, believe it or not, this car is actually emissions legal for all 50 states. That means carb legal. If you're in California and you want to do a swap, this is actually a carb legal swap. Now, you can also do a carb legal K swap in this car as well. You can do a K20 a, uh, Z3 out of the 06 Civic SI, use that ECU, and that winds up being perfectly legal in this car, 50 state legal in this car, and it will pass emissions as well. That computer is electronically compatible with the wiring on this car, and it works just like it should. The only problem you're gonna have is a lot of the stuff that was for your hybrid. Those lights aren't gonna work. Those things on the dash aren't gonna work. So it can be a little bit irritating telling you your IMA is not working the whole time you're driving around. By the way, if you have the later style version of this CRZ, I think uh, 2015 and later, that's compatible with the 2012 SI motor and 2012 SI computer. So that's still gonna be a legal swap that is gonna be 50 states emissions legal. So, what's the advantage of the L15? Well, first of all, these things are plentiful. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit difficult to find is the transmission. But with the engine and transmission, it's pretty easy to get it to work now. We have a lot of companies actually manufacturing parts to do these swaps. Obviously, Hasport makes mounts for this particular chassis. They also make it for the, <coughs> they also make it for the third gen fit. They also make them for the EG, EK, and DC2 uh, Civics and Integra. Uh, and there are gonna be more chassis coming up soon. So the engine will fit in all these cars. And the mounting is very, very similar to what it's like when you're doing a K-Series. So that's not really a big deal. We actually have quite a few of these swaps starting to drive around. We have several people building these to race in grid life uh, in their race series. We have uh, Bryant Robinson or Divergent Concepts he has his EK that's been running for years. Bryant also works for K-Tuner, and K-Tuner came up with the original swap ECU for these engines. So Honda isn't your only choice. You can also go to K-Tuner, and they will also modify the ECU for swapping into different cars. He's been running his EK now for several years, road races it, and uh, they even drive it on the street. They've done a great job of tuning that car, and it's super fast. Although the K-Tuner tunes aren't 50 state legal, there are tunes available through Han data that are carb legal or 50 state legal. So whatever your desire is, you should be able to meet it. Even with a stock engine, those carb legal tunes will actually make way more horsepower and way more torque than the stock K24 does. So that's gonna be a fast car even with a 50 state legal tune. We are actually working on a couple of cars ourselves. We have a 2015 fit that has a L15 engine swap and we're also working on an EK. You may have heard of this. This is the Midori Green Max Boost EK that's owned by the people that brought you the comic strip Max Boost. And uh, that car should be coming to a track near you pretty soon. On our 2015 fit, we had the vision of making kind of a fit type R, had Honda made something like that. So we're hoping to get that up and uh, running as though it were stock here before too long and get it out on the road as well and kind of see how it's gonna do. A lot of those L15s in the cars that they came in have been tuned to well over 300 horsepower. Uh, these cars are making a lot of power and uh, this engine is going to be the future of Honda tuning. Now don't get me wrong, there are still millions of K-series in cars and they're gonna be coming out of those cars as those cars come off the road. So there's no danger of those things going away in the next 20 years, but these things are piling up in the salvage yards now and it's only a matter of time for the price to come down. That brings up an interesting point, the price. Right now, swapping an L15B7 is only moderately more expensive than swapping in a K-Series. I think the major stumbling block is people's unfamiliarity with it. 
not necessarily with the products not being available, but pretty soon, as people become more familiar and more products come to market, it's gonna be no more difficult to do this car than it would be to do a K-swap in your car. It's gonna wind up being about the same amount of effort and probably about the same amount of price. And the prices might even come down, particularly as K-series engines become more expensive and the L15s become less expensive. That's gonna be like that for a while. But we've seen a resurgence in B-series swaps. A lot of people who were young when the B-series engine were out, they want those. They want to put those old swaps in. The same thing's going to happen with the K-series. There's going to be young people, as they get older, they're going to desire to have the K-swap, the one that was popular when they were young. And we have a bunch of new drivers who are driving the new Civic Si, the new Civic Sport, the new Civic EX. And those are the people that are going to be looking at maybe swapping those motors in some of the older chassis as they get older, get money, and start doing engine swaps and things like that. It's going to be really interesting to see how this goes. I like it because as the owner of Hasport, this kind of continues to breathe life into my business as Honda comes out with more engines that are going to be desirable to swap. I think the L15 has taken a little bit longer to kind of look like a viable swap uh, I blame myself for a lot of that. We really didn't push that swap very hard. Why are people trying to talk to me? They're looking for big right. swaps. Yeah. One of the other big selling points about this engine is the transmission. These transmissions are made for a lot more torque, so they're beefier, stronger than the K-Series transmission. Now, you may be thinking, ooh, how do I get one on my K-Series engine? I'm not going to really worry about that, but let me tell you, if you've got an L15 B7 and you turn up the torque, the transmission is going to be able to handle it. Now, some of the people racing these may be disagreeing with me on that, but for a street-driven car, these transmissions are definitely stronger than K-Series. And we all know K-Series have kind of a practical limit on how much horsepower you can have before they start going bad. These transmissions, believe me, will take more torque and are a stronger transmission. The shifting mechanism is the same as all the later Model K series transmissions. So axles, you can buy those from all the usual suspects. Hasport, Insane Shafts, and I'm sure Drive Shaft Shop will have them also. Now, right now, the, there's a little bit of a difference between the SI transmission and the EX transmissions. The SI transmissions come with the LSD. They actually have slightly larger joints, uh, but that may, just means they're stronger. They're made for more torque. They're a little bit better. Another interesting thing about these engines, the SI motor is, happens to be the same motor that comes in the CRV. And the CRV is selling numbers just like the Civic is. So there are tons of those SI equivalent motors in CRVs everywhere. Uh, something else, the Accord, that's even stronger than the CRV engine. That one actually has a twin scroll built into it. The exhaust port's divided into two ports and it works better, that turbo is more efficient with that twin port setup. So the Accord motor makes even more horsepower than the Civic does. So that's gonna be a viable option. All of those engines will run with the uh, swap ECUs that are available from Honda and K-Tuner. You just have to make sure that your computer matches your MAF sensor, and of course the engine wiring harness as well. That brings up another point, wiring harnesses. Wiring harnesses are going to start becoming popular. I understand that Rywire is working on a complete harness. And their complete harness, they want to bring the computer inside the car where it is on K-series swaps. And then you have the JDI harness. That's basically a conversion harness that they're making that's all plug and play. And that means you can use the stock engine harness on the engine. And then you're going to have a sub-harness that goes in. And that should help save you a little bit of money. So all the stuff is falling into place in order to make these swaps as popular as they are, as the K-Series was. So I'm hoping that here in the near future, we start seeing a bunch more of these engines running around in EGs, EKs, DC2s, and hopefully seeing them at the racetrack as well. We will be going to the racetrack with some of our L15 powered cars, and we hope to see what kind of results we get against the K-series motors that are already out there.
One of the things that makes this engine so desirable, it's, it's actually incredibly compact. We have the turbo on the front with a downpipe that kind of hugs the front edge, has the catalytic converter contained in it, and really it's just a little bit taller than a K-series motor. Uh, otherwise, dimensionally, it's very, very similar. By the way, the differential is a little bit larger as well. That has to do with the beefier transmission. So all in all though, it fits in, as you can see in this car, very nicely. It's not as pretty as a K-series, but it fits in nicely. As this engine swap matures, we're gonna see things like custom radiators, custom intercoolers. We've already seen some custom parts, catch cans and uh, different hose outlets and things like that coming from Robert over at Track Tough. But we're gonna start seeing things probably like new injector systems, also hopefully high pressure fuel pumps, maybe some cams that allow for higher pressure. So all these things are currently in design process and hopefully we see those things coming soon for these engines. There are turbo upgrades available. There are catalytic converter deletes for race cars and upgraded catalytic converters for more performance. Uh, the exhaust routing on these things is particularly easy, so I don't see any problems with that. One of the things we discovered recently is you can use the accelerator pedal position sensor that comes on the 03 to 7 Accords, it comes on the 04 to 08 TSX, it comes on the 04 to 08 TL. That makes it much more plug and play because you can just basically bolt that to the firewall and then use a throttle cable from like a element and that will operate your throttle. That way you don't have to chop up your pedal assembly and put in the uh, pedal that contains that pedal position sensor on there. So that's gonna make the swaps even easier. So things are looking up for the swap. Parts are coming along, the swap's gonna get easier and pretty soon it's gonna be interesting to see at what point the K's start to trail off and the L15's start to pick up. Kind of like a VTEC crossover. Anyway guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe, particularly if you're interested in the L15B7 because uh, we have more swap information coming up on that car and we have more swaps coming. So again, like and subscribe, that helps bring us to more people and uh, that also helps support the channel so that we can bring you more good information like this. Anyway guys, thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll talk to you later.